what it was. Y'all know who it is. And uh, you tuned in with Priceless Knowledge Itself. And I figured I'd put y'all down with a little cosmic insight for the day. And uh, say, man, I don't know where y'all at, but here where I'm at in Narnia, it is a beautiful Monday, man. It's snowing and shit. And you got to understand that I'm from West Texas, so I'm not used to seeing this shit all the time. So every time I see it, and it happens all the time, it's fucking gorgeous to me. It feels spiritually nourishing, and I can't stop gushing about it, and I probably won't. I ain't got froze in yet. Ain't no avalanche killed a nigga, so I'm all right. You did? And uh, at the same time, maybe one day I want to come out this wardrobe, but uh, until then... Nah, this was cracking. For me, anyway. So you need to find out where your piece is, man. So, moving on, man. We're going to kick back off into this moon series. And it's going to get interesting because uh, we exalted today. So, this right here. This is a little something, something about those people that have the moon in Taurus in their natal chart. And before I even get to them, man. Even though it gets on y'all's nerves. <laughs> you already know what I'm going to do first, man. You understand? I just got to bring this information to y'all all the way around every time. So I'm going to bring y'all a little bit about the moon in astrology. And I also give a little information about the sign of Taurus in astrology. So with that being said, let's get a cracking. What's the moon? The moon is the closest celestial body in relation to Earth and the whole entire solar system. So I really think that it has the strongest effect on our moods and personality on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, the moon is our instinctive awareness, our emotional nature. It's about how we feel. In Vedic astrology, they view it as the mind, but I really just think it's about how you see you, how you internalize things. It's who you are before you put your mask on, which is kind of what the rising sign is. The moon rules the fourth house of the zodiac as well as the sign of cancer. And uh, think about it like this, man. The moon controls the earth's tides and the earth is 65 to 70 percent water. Well, your body is 65 to 70 percent fluid. So think about the effect it must have on you internally. And, you know, the moon, uh, it can represent your mother or the lack thereof in the relationship aspect of it. The moon is all about who you are inside, man. No, the sun sign is kind of your spirit or the whole thing. The rising sign is, you know, your outward personality, how you appear to others and who you appear as and the vehicle you use to get to where the sun sign is. But the moon sign, it's who you really are. You know, it's who you are behind closed doors. And the thing about the moon sign is, you know, not everybody's going to get to see your moon sign because it's really reserved for only those you're most comfortable with. And a lot of the time, some people never get that comfortable with anybody. So, you know, nobody gets to see that lunar light shining, man. But the moon is your internalizations, man. It's who you really are inside. And I really think it's the strongest aspect of the big three. But who am I but an expert? So what's the sign of Taurus? Taurus is the second sign of the zodiac. It rules over the second house. It's ruled by Venus. It lords over the throat. Its symbol is the bull, and its mantra is I have. This is fixed earth, y'all. And Taurus energy is all about rewards and that what we each place value in. Whereas Aries is kind of all about the love of the game. Taurus is all about the love of what the game can give you. Think physical pleasures and material goods and reveling in delicious excess. <laughs> you know, the energy that comes along with the Venetian board, it's also kind of tactile and it's tender with a slightly sensual touch. Wherever Taurus shows up in a chart, it's going to seek to bring comfort, especially that which we derive from surrounding ourselves with the shit we find pleasing, soothing or beautiful. And I'll be as stubborn as it comes, Taurus wants you to have the good life in all its guises. Whether we've been given the game or done it self-made, it really wants us to value all the blessings we possess and get the most out of all the assets. Either we got it or somebody gave them to us. You dig? So, what happens when you're born with the moon in Taurus in your natal chart, huh? Well, the thing to remember off top with this is... The moon is exalted in Taurus, which makes some of these the most laid back, down to earth and emotionally stable people that are on this physical plane, y'all. And that's just real, man. They're the coolest people you're going to encounter. 
And when I say exalted, it's because of this. Taurus is a fixed earth sign that's feminine, thus receptive. And the moon is the receiver of the sun's light. So, you know, Taurus is an extremely synchronous home for all that the moon truly represents, which manifests in this individual that's a lot more responsive than active to the point that, you know, some of them even seem passive yet utterly immovable at the same time. You know, that's the kind of paradox in itself. In any case, you know, they want to be sure of any steps moving forward and are typically ultra conservative about any changes. That's going to fuck with them a little bit. Maybe a lot. <laughs> Taurus is generally a sign that likes the familiar, cozy, and stable. And the, the moon shows what makes us feel secure. So Taurus moons, you know, they're all about building a solid life with solid people like themselves, man. And if you're fickle or wishy-washy, you know, you probably ain't for them. And that's not trying to hurt nobody's feelings. It's going to be problems because they're the opposite of that. And, you know, as with Taurus son, they can be extremely stubborn and bullheaded, you know, pun intended. And, you know, these motherfuckers have such an inherent sense of determination. It'll probably take God himself to knock them off course once they set their eyes on something, especially if that something is a beautiful somebody or a material object that they feel like increases their own personal sense of self-worth. Because, you know, then it's over with for anything in their way, man. I mean, this is a bull. And sometimes they can't get on that bullshit. <laughs> when it comes to the moon and Taurus people and their mothers, you know, they probably had a pretty strong relationship with their mom and grew up in a fairly traditional home, which really rubbed off on the child or, you know, it even made them, you know, find themselves later on following in their family's traditions because it just that's what they saw and that's what felt secure to them and that's what feels familiar to them you know or for whatever reason maybe their mother couldn't be there for them emotionally you know and she probably tried to compensate for for buying the child things which may have manifested in a motherfucker that kind of seeks emotional nurturing in material goods more than real true emotional things with people you know either way there was something about this early life that made them value their comfort and security above all else and you have some that find that in people and but most are going to find that in their own self in their surroundings and that's just a little news you can use moving on though Taurus moons are pleasure seekers in pretty much every sense of the word. And likewise, they're going to be a pleasure to be around, man, because they value comfort and relaxation so much that they're going to make it a priority for them and anybody around them to fully relish in it if possible. And I ain't going to hate on that. They love delicious food, you know, good music, lavish drinks and exquisite company, man. You know, maybe even the finest smoke, too, <laughs> for those that are initiated. <laughs> so when you fuck with them, you know, I advise you to leave that bullshit at the crib because more than anything else, these motherfuckers just want to chill, man. They just want to chill, you know, and who the fuck can hate on that? I can't. Shit, call me to your house because I know y'all got that good. I know it. <laughs> These people, are though, they do have a certain take charge nature underneath all of that, too. But everything is just done in a real deliberate style, man. Just to make sure that each step is on solid ground before they proceed forward through life. And when shit gets too heavy for them, you know, they're going to get bogged down with emotional baggage. And they kind of become inert. And Taurus-style depression... <laughs> It's going to lead to overindulgence and a whole bunch of wallowing around and motherfucking self-pity. And it's going to be damn near impossible to put them about that shit, man, because this is fixed earth. And so they can get stuck in that shit. On the other side of the coin, though, these motherfuckers really know how to savor the good shit in life. So they usually excel at taking care of business and they're blessed with an emotional stability that helps them stay calm, cool, and collected when other motherfuckers, you know, are lost in confusion. And when this life is the way that it is, 
We need moving towards people. You got to understand that. I'd love to have one in my life. Thank God I have Pluto in the first house and I have Mars and Capricorn that stabilizes me. But I got a lot of water in my chart, man. <laughs> it gets out of control sometimes. You know, and I would also pay very close attention to the house placement with this exaltation too, because it's really going to allude to, you know, the story of the setting where this quiet resolve plays out for them personally in their chart. And my advice for y'all that do have the moon and Taurus in y'all's chart is to really be careful with getting too motherfucking complacent in this life. Never forget that there is always room for improvement, man. Always. And even if it's slowly and deliberately, hey, we're going to keep moving forward. Because that's what we're about. Just do it. Okay? Understand, man. It don't matter where you got your moon placed at, man. It don't matter where your sun is or your north node or your south node or Pluto. You ain't got to feed into any of the negative qualities. Just because you built like that, it don't mean you have to build like that. And as long as you remember that, this will always be priceless knowledge itself for you. If you fuck with me, please like, share, and subscribe. If you're interested in the astrological reasons whatsoever, mm -hmm. You can either hit me up in the comments below or email me at mr.turner1300 at gmail.com. And uh, until then, keep it real, because that's all I know how to do, man. And anything else would be uncivilized. <laughs> <laughs>